So, now we have started studying about the methods of data analysis. And the first module on data analysis was about measures of central tendencies. Central tendencies are also known as averages and uh, they give you an idea about the central values of the distribution under study. And you have come across three measures of central tendencies, the arithmetic mean, the median, and the more. And in this module on data analysis, we are dealing with the measures of variation. Measures of variation or the measures of dispersion. And uh, what is a measure or what are measures of variation or measures of dispersion? Averages like mean, median or more represent the central values of a distribution. But you can see that in a distribution of x for example, in a distribution of x, each and every value of x will be varying from the central value or some values of the variable x vary higher when compared to other values. Some of the values are near the central value and some of them are uh, showing a higher variation. Variation towards the lower side or towards the higher side. So, to know the properties of a distribution actually, more scientifically, such averages which give you ideas on the central tendencies are not enough. Uh, besides these central values, we need certain other values that describe the nature of variation shown by the variables from the central value. And such measures, such values, such values of statistics, which show the variation of each and every value of x from the central value, are known as measures of variation. And measures of, of measures of variation are known as second level averages because they show the or, or they give you an idea about the variation of the deviations of each and every value of the variable x from the central value. And um, there are several measures of variations. But there are several measures of dispersion and the most important among them are range, quartile deviation, mean deviation, variance and uh, standard deviation. Range, quartile deviation, mean deviation, variance and standard deviation. So let us see one by one. Range is the simplest value or the simplest measure of variation. It, it shows in similar terms, it shows the range of the variation. It shows the range from the lowest value of x to the highest value of x. 
and uh, the merit of rains is that it shows, it gives you an idea about the spread of the distribution. Since it is the difference between the lowest value and the highest value, or it is the difference between the highest value and the lowest value. In practice, usually we simply show it with a dash. If a distribution is from 20 to 100, for example, we usually say that the range is 20 dash 100. But in statistics, range is a calculated value. A calculated value calculated from the largest item of the distribution and the smallest item of the distribution. Or you can say that range is equal to L minus S if L is the largest value and S is the smallest value. And uh, as you know, as we have seen now, it is very easy to calculate, very easy to understand. And it's very popular also. But the main disadvantage of the range is that it is not presenting the values of the distribution other than the extreme values. It speaks about the largest value and the smallest value. And this is a limitation and moreover it is not calculated statistically. So, to avoid this problem, this problem of a measure of deviation or a measure of dispersion representing the extreme values only or indicating the difference between the extreme values only, several methods have been developed. And uh, you can see that uh, to reduce the defects of range which shows the extremes of range. Another measure of dispersion has been proposed and it is known as quartile deviation. And in quartile deviation, a quartile deviation is the difference between the middle 50% of the distribution. Or in simple terms, it is the range between the middle 50% of the distribution. You are not considering the 25% uh, values at the left end of the distribution and also you are not considering the 25% values at the right end of the distribution. So, you are dividing the distribution into four quarters and you are calculating the values that demarcate each quarter and uh, you are finding out the range between the second quarter and the third quarter. I mean, rather speaking, the end of the first quarter and then the end of the third quarter. It is called quartile deviation and quartile deviation is calculated using certain symbol techniques. And as you know, in the case of as in the case of mean, median, mode, etc. here also, in the case of 
calculating measures of dispersion also, measures of variation also. You will be getting three three types of data, unorganized data, data in the form of a discrete frequency table, and data in the form of a continuous frequency table. And you can see that in the case of unorganized data, the data you are getting arranged uh, one after the other. Each of them will be uh, recorded from a different unit. And uh, here it will be useful to remember the calculation or the, remember the way in which you found out the median. You see, in the case of calculation of median, you are dividing the distribution into two halves. And for the purpose, in the case of unorganized data, you are finding of the, of the value of the n plus 1 by 2 at i t. n is the total number of units in the Sample n plus 1 by 2. And actually, n plus 1 by 2 represents the value of q2. So, here you can see that there are, uh, you can say there are three values. A, the, a value known as q1 which stands in the middle of the first 50% of the distribution, a value known as Q3, which stands in the middle of the second 50% of the distribution, and Q2 is the middle value of the distribution. So, Q2, you have already calculated, it is, or you have already found out its position, it is the position is the n plus 1 by 2 position. So, in the case of unorganized data, here we are going to find out the quartile deviation. And quartile deviation thus, as you know, is the difference between the range between the value of Q3 and the value of Q1. And Q1 is the middle value of the first 50% of the distribution and Q3 is the middle value of the second 50% of the distribution. And for the purpose, Q1 is located by finding out the value of the n plus 1 by 4 i. So, you find out the value of n plus 1 by 4 of a distribution. n plus 1 divided by 4. Uh, then you get the value of the position of q1. And if you are multiply, multiplying it with 3, 3 into n plus 1 by 4. Or 3 into Q1 will be giving you Q2, the position of Q2, the position of Q1 into 3. And of course, you see, the position of Q1 into 2 is the position of median. And here an example is given. And in the example, there are 10 plants, their yields are given. And the yields have been arranged in the ascending order. So you have to find out Q1 and Q3. And there is a formula for the calculation of quartile deviation. And it is quartile deviation is equal to Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. The value of Q3 minus the value of 
with the variable at the position of q3 minus the value of the variable at the position of q1 divided by 2. So in the given example, when you are arranging the data in the ascending order, or before that you are calculating q1. So q1, the position of q1, q, q1 the position of q1 is equal to uh, it is the value of n plus 1 by 4 the item and here n is 10 and n plus 1 by 4 means 10 plus 1 divided by 4 that is 11 by 4 and it is 2.7 and when you are uh, considering the, si the situation of the distribution uh, 2.7 item means you have to take the value of the third item. So the third item represents the Q1 of the given distribution. So in this distribution when the data are arranged in the ascending order 70 the yield the value of yield 70 uh, is, is the it is there in the third uh, position so 70 is the Q value of q1 so the position of q1 bar position of the seven uh, third item when you consider consider it uh, practically and if you multiply 2.75 with 3 3 into 2.75 gives the position of the the position of Q3. The position is uh, the position of Q3 is given by 3 into 2.75 and it is the position the value is equal to 8.25 and here it is the you have to take it as the 8th item. So Q3 is the position of Q3 is at the 8th eight, eight position so the value at the Q1 position is 70 and the value at the Q3 position is 9 and uh, when you apply it in the formula the formula to calculate uh, Quartile deviation is Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2 uh, means Q3 is 90 and Q1 is 70. So 90 minus 70 by 2 is equal to 10. 90 minus 70 divided by 2 is equal to 10. So 10 is the quartile deviation of the example given. So that was about the unorganized data and then comes a, a discrete frequency distribution in the, in the discrete frequency distribution the variable is discrete so and uh, it, since it is a frequency table each value of the variable x will be having several frequencies and x is given in the first column and f the frequency is given in the second and here also quartile deviation is the value of the difference between the value at the q3 position and the value at the q1 position the first step is to find out the Q3 position and the Q1 position. Here in the given distribution n is equal to 100. So Q1, the position of Q1 is uh, 1 at the n plus 1 by 4 position. And the position of Q3 is obtained by multiplying uh, n plus 1 by 4 by 3. So here n, n is 100 in the given distribution, there are 100 items, 100 units in the distribution 
or 100 plants are there. Uh, in the frequency table, 100 the values from 100 plants are distributed. I mean, you can see that here n is 100. So n plus 1 is 101 divided by 4 is equal to 25.25. So the position of Q1 here is at the 25.25 position. It means that it is at the 25th position. 25th position. To find out the 25th position, you have to draw one more column. The column of the cumulative frequency. And the cumulative frequency used here is the lesser than cumulative frequency. So you have to draw a column as shown in the example. And you have to write down the cumulative frequencies one by one. So you can see that from the uh, uh, you want the value of the 25th plan, and from the 25th plan to the 20, I mean 36th plan, the values are represented in uh, in the in the fourth row of the distribution given uh, hence the 25th plan is also there and the value of x here is 30 so the value of q1 in the present experiment is 30 then let us see the value of q3 you are multiplying Q, the position of Q1 25.25 with uh, 3 and you are getting 75.75 means 76 and the 76th plant is in the 7th row uh, up to the from the 67th plan up to the 60, I mean up to the 78th plan, it is in the, in the 7th row and the x value of x is 60. So now you have got the value values of Q1, I mean Q1 and Q3 and Q3 is equal to 16 and uh, Q1 is equal to 30. And uh, quartile deviation is Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2 and it is equal to 16 minus 13 divided by 2 which is equal to 1.5. And then comes calculation of quartile deviation in the case of continuous frequency distribution. Quartile deviation in the case of continuous frequency distribution. So in the case of a continuous frequency distribution, you get a continuous uh, frequency table uh, with uh, the values or the classes of x in the first column and the frequencies in the second column. So here also, the first step is to find out the position of Q3 and Q1. And by formula, Q, uh, quartile deviation is equal to Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. And in the given example, n is equal to 2. And uh, that's, uh, there is a difference here uh, in the case of uh, unorganized data and uh, discrete frequency distribution. We were uh, taking the position of the, we were taking the value of the n plus 1 by 4 item. Uh, as the position of Q1 and uh, 3 into the position of n plus 1 by 4th item as the position of Q3. But in the case of continuous frequency distribution, you are taking the position of n by 4th item as the value of Q1 and uh, the position of 3 into n by 4 as the value of Q3. So the, uh, in the given example, 
the position of q1 n by 4 is at the 50th position and uh, q3 the position of q1 into 3 is at the 150th position and 50th I, the, in the given example the 50th position comes in the third row the class is 60 to 80 and the position of the 150th item comes in the fifth row and the class is 100 to 150. So the Q1 class is 60 to 80 and the Q3 class is 100 to 150. In the given example, the value of the 150th item is Q3 and the value of the 50th item is Q1 and uh, the position 1 or uh, the position 50, the position of Q1 comes in the third row with uh, the class uh, as 60 to 80 and uh, the position 150 comes with uh, I mean in the class or it has a uh, value of x between 100 to 1. So q1 and q3 now you have calculated. Then using a formula you have to find out the quartile deviation. I mean, uh, the, uh, you know, using a formula, you have to find out the Q1 and uh, Q3 from the classes because they are frequency classes and there is no single value. Q1 is equal to uh, the formula is similar to the formula that you have used for finding out the median and Q1 is equal to L plus N by 4 minus EF divided by F into I and the formula for Q3 is L plus 3 into N by 4 minus EF divided by F into I. So Q1 is L plus N by 4 minus EF by F multiplied with I and uh, in the case of Q3 you are getting the value by adding with the lower limit of the class a value of n per m. 3n by 4, 3 into n by 4 minus cf divided by f into i and in this case also here also this cf stands for the cumulative frequency of the class just above the concerned class just above the q1 class in the calculation of q1 and just above the Q3 class in the calculation of Q3. So in the formula you get Q1 by calculation you are adding a value with 60 uh, and the value to be added is 13.33 uh, by the formula by using the formula 50 stands for the for n by 4 cf is the cumulative frequency of the previous class of the q1 class 30 is the frequency of the q1 class and i is the class interval and you can see that in the case of Q3, the formula is L plus 3n by 4 minus cf divided by f into i 
And with the lower limit of the Q3 class, that is 100, you have to add a value. And here, the calculation is like this. 3 into N by 4, you will get 150. And by 4 is 50, so 3 into N by 4 is 150 minus the cumulative frequency of the value above the uh, Q3 class and uh, divided by the frequency of the Q3 class multiplied by class interval then you get uh, 100 plus 20 and the value is 100. So here the value of Q3 is 120 and the value of Q1 is 73.33. So you have to use the formula Q3 minus Q1 by 2 is equal to 120 minus 120 minus 73.33 uh, divided by 2 you will be getting 23.34 as the quartile deviation of this continuous distribution. So the quartile deviation also is not representing each and every value of the distribution. It is giving me the range of the middle 50 percent of values only and moreover it is also not statistically helpful. It depends, depends upon certain positional values. Or then come different measures of deviation that are calculated based on all the units of the distribution. And the first one among them is mean deviation. And in simple terms, mean deviation is the mean of the deviation. You are finding out, uh, you have a table or a group one organized data. You are finding out uh, the difference between each and every value of x and the central value mean x bar and you are finding out the mean of the deviations to find out the mean deviation but here there is a major problem in a distribution usually some values will be lower than the middle value and others may be higher than the middle value and when you minus the mean from the lower values, you get a, a negative value. And when you minus the mean from the higher values, you get a positive value. And to find out the mean, if you are uh, taking the, if you are calculating the sum of these values. Uh, there are some negative values, there are some positive values. When you add them up, uh, they will be mutually getting cancer and the sum will be very low. So, uh, finding out uh, the sum of the variation in such a way and dividing it by the number of individuals in the distribution is not uh, practical. So, for the purpose of calculation, of mean deviation. Statisticians have suggested that you have to take the deviation, you have to find out the value of x minus x bar, for example. x minus x bar is the deviation of each and every value from the mean. And you have to find out it. Ignoring signs means in this calculation you have to take plus 2 minus 2 both of them as plus 2. No sign should be considered. So you are giving a particular uh, representation for that. Uh, the uh, letter D is written with the two uh, bars on both, both the sides. 
and that stands for the, the difference between x and x bar ignoring the size and from the total of that when the total of that is divided by the total number of units in the population or in sample you get the mean deviation so the, there is a given there is an example given to you uh, so before that the formula this becomes sigma d by n and d is denoted as shown in the example so the you are uh, making a tabular form from the data given in the first column you are giving the plan numbers if it is the num the uh, you are, if you are going to calculate the mean deviation of the number of coconuts yielded by 10 coconut palms of a farm in a particular year for example uh, you are giving the plan number in the first column and you are giving the yield in the next column and uh, you the next step is the calculation of n and the mean n is the total number of individuals the total number of units and here there are 10 plants and n is equal to 10 and uh, the next step is calculation of mean as you have studied already mean is equal to in the case of India unorganized data mean is equal to sigma x by n and uh, if you are calculating sigma x by n uh, from these values you can see that the mean is the arithmetic mean is 78 then you have to calculate the mean deviation from it and for that the next step is calculation of the deviation ignoring size in each case so you are finding out x minus x bar in, uh, corresponding to the first row or the first plan second plan third plan fourth plan like that and in all the cases you are ignoring size so you are getting the values of d as shown in the column and then you are finding out sigma d you are uh, calculating the total means you are finding out the uh, sigma d and then this sigma d is then divided by the total number of units in sample n and here n is 10 so the formula of mean deviation in the case of unorganized data is sigma d by n and it is equal to sigma d as calculated is 100 and n is 10 so sigma d by n is 10 so that was about uh, the calculation of mean deviation in the case of uh, unorganized data and then comes a discrete frequency distribution and in the case of discrete frequency distribution as you know uh, each value of x will be having it is a frequency table into each value of x will be having a, a different frequency so you will be having two columns the x column the uh, variable column and the f column the frequency column and here also you, you are given an example and in the example the example is on the tiller number of a sample of 100 plants of a variety of rice of an experimental plot and tiller number varies from 10 to 19 and the frequencies are corresponding frequencies are given and the first step is to find out the total number of units in the sample given n is to be calculated n is equal to sigma f and here it is 100 and the next step is uh, finding out d in each case d ignoring sign d calculated uh, from x minus x bar ignoring signs and you are getting all the values here uh, x minus x bar in the first case uh, in the second case like that in the case of uh, discrete frequency distribution x bar is sigma fx by n you know that and uh, in the given data sigma fx by n is 
uh, if you calculate it, it is 14.43. So, uh, mean of the x bar is 14.43, and from 14.43, you have to or you have to find out the difference between each and every value of the x and uh, the mean 14.43, so 10 minus 14.43, 11 minus 14.43, 12 minus 14.43, like that, and you will get the values of D, and all the values are given here. So you are not uh, showing their positive, or their negative, or positive signs, so you are ignoring the signs. And in this case, as it's a frequency table, each value of x is having several frequencies, means each value of d is also having uh, a different frequency. Uh, for example, the first, first uh, value of d should be is represented six times, the second value of d is represented eight times, the third value of d is represented nine times, like that. So you have to multiply d with d frequency or you have to find out FD. So the next step is to find out the FD. So FD is calculated in each case by multiplying the frequency with the value of D corresponding to it. And the next step is totaling them to find out sigma of Sigma of D is calculated to find out the total. And uh, in this present experiment, sigma FD is 201. So, the formula here is mean deviation since it is discrete frequency distribution. And since you have calculated sigma FD, the formula of mean deviation is sigma FD by mean. Oh, sigma FD is 201. So, 201 divided by n, uh, n is 100. And the value of mean deviation is 2.01. And then comes the calculation of mean deviation in the case of continuous frequency distribution. Uh, in the case of continuous frequency distribution, you get a continuous frequency table with different classes and their corresponding frequencies. And here also the first step is to find out the total number of units, n, and n is equal to sigma f. And in the given example, it is uh, 200. And here also the next step is to calculate the arithmetic mean. Arithmetic mean in the case of continuous frequency table is sigma fm by n. m is the middle value of x. So you have to find out the middle value and uh, uh, you have to uh, find out Fm and uh, you have to calculate, divide it, divide the sigma Fm by n to get the arithmetic mean as you have done earlier. So, uh, in this case, in the case of the given example, you, if you calculate the arithmetic mean, you can see that the arithmetic mean is 97. And, if it, uh, and the next step, if the arithmetic mean is known to you, if it is 97, for example, uh, you get, you have already calculated uh, the different values or you already know the different values of or the middle values of each class here they are given and the next step is uh, as in the case of discrete frequency table here also the next step, step is finding out uh, finding out x minus x bar means here finding out m minus x bar. Finding out the middle value minus x bar. And if x bar, the mean is 97, uh, you have to 
find out the difference of the middle value with each value of you can, you have to find out the difference of the middle value of each class with the arithmetic mean and uh, all the values have been calculated and given here so you get d the deviation of each and every middle value of x from the central value in that particular chord and here uh, uh, since it is a frequency distribution you know that each uh, each middle value each class is having a different depth means each middle value also is having a different frequency so for that purpose the next uh, step is to find out fd here also so you are multiplying the value of d with the, the frequency in each row so you get the values the fd values one by one and finally you will be finding out sigma fd sigma fd is also calculated and as I, I have already mentioned here also d is calculated ignoring the d is found out ignoring the signs of d and you are calculating fd ignoring the signs and you are finding out sigma fd and in the present experiment given it is 5400 and you are Applying the formula, mean deviation is equal to sigma f d by n, which is equal to 5400 divided by 200, which is equal to the mean deviation is equal to 27. So that was about mean deviation, and mean deviation is also having, mean deviation is having the merit that it is represented or it is calculated representing each and every unit of data collection and every unit of your sample but the problem is that you have ignored the signs of deviations and that is a uh, non-mathematical action so you have ignored the signs so you can say that you can say that it is the, the mean deviation is not calculated mathematically or mean deviation is not a mathematically calculated measure of deviations so, mean deviation also cannot be used any for any further uh, calculations or further steps in statistical analysis. So, scientists have developed measures of dispersion that are calculated strictly on a mathematical basis uh, without any non-mathematical action between them. And uh, there are several such measures of dispersion, several such measures of variation, but all of them are related. And here the basic principle applied is, applied is if you are multiplying or if you are finding out the square of a negative value, if you are finding out the square of a negative value, it will be positive. So, you have calculated the squares of all the deviations here. Instead of d, you have calculated d square in all the calculations. And there are different measures, uh, variance, standard deviation, and variance and standard deviation are the two uh, measures basically. And there are certain corresponding values calculated from them. Uh, like uh, uh, coefficient of variation and uh, standard error. We will see them one by one. Variance is known as mean square deviation. You see in the case of mean deviation, you have found out the mean of the deviations, but you have totaled them non-mathematically. You have ignored the signs. So, here in the case of variance, you are squaring the values of d so that all of them become positive and then you are finding out the 
mean. So variance is mean square deviation. Then comes standard deviation and standard deviation is root mean square deviation. You are finding out, you are uh, scoring the deviations, you are finding out, uh, out the mean and that is the variance and you are finding out the square root of it. And square root of variance is known as standard deviation. So by calculating standard deviation, you have, uh, perhaps you can see that you have, you can say that you have nullified the effect of squaring the deviations by finding out the square root of the final value. So, these are the two variance and standard deviation. And of course, uh, measures of dispersion like uh, variance and uh, standard deviation can be compared in the case of different populations or in the case of different samples, uh, variance and standard deviation, various like the variance and standard deviation can be compared, a uh, comparison between different populations become easy only if you are given the means also, the mean, mean values of the uh, corresponding variables also. So, variance and standard deviation depend upon the, their means and if mean is not known, there is no meaning in speaking about variance and standard deviation. And uh, under certain circumstances, you will be uh, in a need of finding out percentage values of variation points. So here, very effectively, you can convert standard deviation, for example, to a percentage value, a percent as a percentage of mean. So standard deviation expressed as percentage of mean. Uh, is known as coefficient of variation, CV, coefficient of variation. So, coefficient of variation is calculated uh, as the percentage of standard deviation in relation to the mean value of the distribution. And there is another value which is not standard error. And standard error is calculated uh, for a different purpose. Uh, in the case of samples, samples are, as you know, they are smaller than the original experimental populations. And it's, it is important to know the size of the sample, or it is important to speak about the standard deviation in terms of the size of the Sample. And for that purpose, uh, a, a measure has been developed and it is known as standard error. And uh, the technical definition of standard error is like this. Standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Standard deviation of the sampling distribution is known as standard error. And uh, it, it is calculated, uh, it is also calculated from the standard deviation based on the size of the population, size, size of the population, I mean the size of the sample. So uh, in the case of individual observations, we are going to see some examples and uh, variance is mean square deviation. And the first step is to find out D and here the, you can use small d and uh, uh, there are no other elements given on uh, either sides and small d is calculated uh, by uh, finding out x minus x bar, the value of each and every value of x, the difference between each and every value of x and uh, the mean. So, D is x minus x bar 
and d square is then found out. So you are finding out the deviation, uh, squaring the deviations, and uh, then the squared deviations are total, and you are dividing it with n, the size of the sample, for example, to find out the base. Since variance is mean square, wait. And in the case of individual observations or in the case of unorganized data, the formula of variance is variance is equal to sigma uh, d square divided by n. Variance is equal to sigma d square divided by n. You are uh, totaling the deviations, I mean the totaling the square of deviations and dividing it with n. Yeah. The next step is calculation of standard deviation and you are given an example here. And standard deviation is usually denoted with uh, the small Greek letter sigma. Uh, sigma is equal to or standard deviation is equal to square root of sigma d squared by n or it is root mean square deviation. So here you are finding out d, finding out d, d square you are totaling the square, uh, dividing by n, uh, then you get the variance and after that you are finding out the square root. And root means square deviation is known as standard deviation. And then comes the coefficient of variation. And as you know coefficient of variation is by formula it is Standard deviation by mean into hundred. Standard deviation by mean into hundred. And then comes standard error. As I I have already mentioned, standard error is sigma or the standard deviation in relation to the value I, at the size of the sample. And by formula, standard error is equal to sigma by root n. Sigma by square root of n. Sigma is the standard. Error and n is the uh, number of units in the set. So, the formula of uh, standard error is sigma by root n. So, now you can find out the different measures of variation starting from uh, uh, variance, standard deviation, and its coefficient, the coefficient of variation and standard error uh, from the example of uh, the Unorganized data given to you. You have 10 plants, the n is 10, yield is given, and from the yield and n you are calculating the mean, and in the given example, mean is 78, x bar is 78, and the next step is to find out d, the deviation of each and every value of x from x bar, and you have calculated all the values here. And the next step comes finding out the square of deviations, d square. So d square is calculated here one by one. And when all the values of d square are calculated, the next step is to find out the total sigma d square. And in your experiment, sigma d square is equal to 1360. So sigma d square is equal to 1360. And the formula for variance is sigma d square by n it is equal to 1360 divided by 10 it is equal to 136. So, variance of the given sample is 136. And standard deviation is its square root, the square root of sigma d squared by n it is equal it is the square root of 136 it is equal to 11.6. Then comes the coefficient of variation, standard deviation by mean into 100, uh, it is equal to standard deviation is 11.66 divided by 78, it is mean into 100, it is 14.95, so 14.95 is the coefficient of variation and finally uh, if you are finding out the standard error, it is sigma by root n or uh, standard deviation by root n, here standard deviation is 11.66. 6, n is 10 
and the root n square root of n square root of 10 is 3.16. So 11.66 divided by 3.16, you get 3.69. So now you have calculated a variance standard deviation coefficient of variation at standard error in the case of unorganized data. And then comes a discrete frequency table. So in the case of a discrete frequency table, as you know, the two columns are there, the class and the frequency. And the first step here also is to find out n. You are uh, finding out the total of all the values of f. Sigma f is calculated to find out n. Then in each case, uh, here also the next step uh, is to calculate the mean value x bar. And x bar in the case of a discrete frequency distribution is sigma fx by n. And uh, uh, from the given distribution, you can calculate uh, it as 14.43. So the uh, calculated value of mean in the given distribution is 14.43. And the next step is uh, finding out the d x minus x bar in the case of each value of x. So you are finding out it uh, one by one, or you are x minus finding out x minus uh, x, mi x minus x bar, ten minus fourteen point four three, eleven minus fourteen point four three, like that. You are continuing up to the end, and and you are getting different values of d. And and as you know, the next step is finding out d square. You are finding out the squares of all the values of d, so that all the values become positive and you are squaring the deviations and you are finding out uh, and here you know uh, one deviation is present several times so, so d square is multiplied with uh, frequency in each case so you are after finding out d square you are uh, calculating f d square. In each case, you are calculating f d square. f is multiplied with d square to get f d, f d square in each case. And then you are finding out sigma f d square. Or finding out sum of f d square. Sigma f d square is calculated. And uh, when one sigma f d square is calculated, you are applying it in the formula of variance. Variance is equal to sigma f d squared by n in the case of a discrete frequency table and sigma f d squared here uh, as calculated is 50 I mean 580.02 and n is 100 so variance is equal to 580.02 divided by 100 it is 5.8 so variance in the case of this variable x in the given distribution is 5.8 and the next step is finding out sigma the standard deviation small sigma uh, standard deviation is the square root of variance so the formula is square root of sigma is described by n so you have to find out the square root of 5.8 and the value is 2.41 so 2.41 is the standard deviation of the given distribution and uh, then comes coefficient of variation and coefficient of variation as you know is standard deviation by mean into 100 here the standard deviation is 2.41 divided by mean of the distribution and it is 14.43 so into 100 2.41 divided by 14.43 into 100 and finally you get the coefficient of variation uh, it is 16.7. In other words, coefficient of variation is variation or standard deviation as percentage of mean. And then comes the standard error. Standard error is calculated using the formula sigma divided by square root of n. Sigma is the standard deviation and n is 100 here. Uh, sigma is 2.41 and is 100 so 2.41 divided by square root of 100 it is equal to 2.41 divided by 10 it is equal to 0 0.24 so 0 0.24 is the standard error 
of the given distribution. So that that was about uh, discrete frequency distribution, and then finally comes the continuous frequency theory. And now we are going to find out the variance, standard deviation, coefficient of variation, and standard error in the case of a continuous frequency table. The here the difference is that the values of x are represented as frequency classes, and the, and the corresponding frequencies are given in the next column. And here also the first step is to calculate the value of n. You have to find out sigma f to find out n, and n in the given distribution is two hundred. And since it is a continuous frequency distribution, you have to find out the middle values of each class. So you are finding out the middle value of each class and giving them in the next column. So the middle values of all the classes are calculated now. And then next is the class the classification of D, and here it is. Here also it is uh, x minus x bar, and here x means m. So you can say that D is m minus x bar, and uh, the mean has been calculated already. Uh, mean in the in the case of the given distribution is sigma f m by n. It is ninety seven. And the difference of m minus x, I mean m minus x bar is taken, uh, middle value minus the mean, and you get all the values uh, m minus x bar. So there are several values for m minus x bar. And as you know, the next step is finding out d square in each case. So you are finding out the Square of each and every value of d to find out the d square. So each has a different frequency. Each value of d has a uh, different frequency, and each value of d square has a different frequency. And for that reason, you are finding out f d square. You are you are multiplying the frequency of each class with d square of that particular class, and you are finding out f d square. So, f d square in each row is calculated here, and uh, finally you will be finding out sigma f d square. Uh, f d square is calculated first in the uh, case of each row, and uh, finally you are uh, finding out the sum of all the f d square values. To That sigma f d square. So when when one sigma f d square is calculated, you are going to calculation of variance. And the formula to calculate variance is sigma f d square by n. And uh, sigma f d square calculated in the case of the present experiment is two uh, lakh ten thousand two hundred. Two one zero two zero zero. So variance is equal to two lakh ten thousand two hundred divided by two hundred, and you get uh, the value as one thousand fifty one. So one thousand fifty one is the variance of the given frequency distribution. And then comes the standard deviation, and standard deviation is the square root of the variance. And uh, here it is the, uh, or by formula, it is square root of f squared by n. And here it is the square root of uh, 1051, and it is 32.42. So that is 32.42 is the standard deviation. And then comes. The coefficient of variation and coefficient of variation is standard deviation by mean into hundred, and it is equal to thirty-two point four two, which is the standard deviation divided by mean ninety-seven uh, into hundred. It is equal to thirty-three point four. So 
coefficient of variation here is 33.4 and finally the standard error standard error is sigma by root n or the standard deviation divided by square root of n n is the size of the sample so here uh, if you substitute the values the standard deviation is 32.42 divided by square root of 200 n is 200 and uh, square root of 200 is 14.14 14. so 32.42 divided by 14.14 14 will be giving you the standard error and it is 2.29 2 so now we have found out uh, the different measures of variation straight starting from the range the cotton deviation the mean deviation the different measures that are mathematically calculated like variance and the standard deviation and certain values calculated from them like uh, the coefficient of standard deviation or the coefficient of variation and the uh, measure of standard error and uh, using the standard deviation or using the standard deviation of different populations you can compare the populations if you are given the mean and standard deviation and if you are given the coefficient of deviation coefficient of variation higher coefficient of variation means higher variability of the distribution low, lower coefficient of variation means lower variability of the distribution and if you want to get a value of the standard deviation in relation to the size of the sample it is a standard error and uh, now you have studied to calculate the standard error also. Thank you very much for listening.